coach you some of the pregame objectives that you had for this one, and did you, did you meet what the pregame objectives were? Yeah, I mean, our pregame object, objective always is to score one more point. And we got that done tonight. Uh, no, I, we played really, really unselfish. We passed the ball extremely well. Uh, defensively, we were pretty good uh, at making them take shots we wanted them to take. Now, in that first first half, they scored 24, and six or eight of them may have come off of our breakdowns, where we let them drive straight to the basket. We had bad angles in transition defense. Um, but besides that, I mean, I was really, really happy with how we passed the ball. We scored. We, we, we scored it well. And just to have six players in, do, in double figures in your high score at 12. I mean, that, that, that's pretty consistent. That, that's pretty darn good right there. And then you've got Yassine, who ends up with eight. So really pleased with how we played tonight. Um, and we needed a game like this at home. We haven't played extremely well here, um, you know, like, like we have in the past. So I, I thought this was a really good ball game. We, we need to get everybody as much rest as we can tomorrow. Because it, it's going to be a ball game on Thursday night. I, I don't care what the scores have been in the past games they've played. When we go up to Notre Dame, it's always a game. And I, I expect it to be a really good basketball game. Coach, as far as Bianca's development goes, it seems like, especially um, the latter part of this season, you know, the mid-range J has really been effective for her. I know she had about, yeah. I think, two or three today. Is you know, well, she's probably never going to have some, uh, Kylie's range. You know, how important is it for her to be able to step out there uh, at the free throw line and, and and knock that down? No, I mean it, it's really important. She's changed a lot of scouting reports. You know, because it used to be make her shoot it at the free free throw line, give her that shot. Now she's worked so hard on her game that she's pretty darn consistent from 15 to 18 feet. She's not a three point shooter. She doesn't need to be a three point shooter. You know, she she can shoot them. She shoots them in practice some. But she knows that's not what she needs to do for us. She shoots it, you know, from 15 feet. She can face up. She's got some quick po uh, post moves when she's uh, back to the basket. But, uh, you know, she's doing a remarkable job. And everybody talks about her uh, offensive output today, but it's what she does at the, de the, the defensive end for us that is invaluable. I, I just – she guards her man. When someone gets big, she beat. She picks up their man, and then she gets back to her man. It's pretty impressive what she does at the defensive end of the floor. Uh, Coach, just the defensive pressure that you all employed on them is it one of your finer defensive efforts this year, in your opinion? Yeah, I thought I thought we played. I played for the most part. We played pretty darn smart. We got our hands in passing lanes. Um, you, you, you seen I'm waiting to see how many deflections she had in 22 minutes because she had her hands on a ton on, on a ton of balls and it's not that she got to steal every time but it disrupts an offense it takes somebody out of a pattern it ruins a, a rhythm um, and I was really really impressed with that and then we forced them in into some turnovers and we're we we did a, a decent job of converting those into points but I've got to give Pitt a bunch of credit because we, we we turned the ball over ten times and they they, they turned those into thirteen points, which is is, is pretty efficient. Can you shed some light uh, right after the uh, you came out at the half? Uh, you called a timeout with thirty seconds into the second or third quarter. Can you shed some light on what that was about? Well, it was a tie up. So instead of burning the jump ball. You know, Kylie got she got on the ground. She's got possession of the ball, so I I just called a timeout there to make sure it's our ball, baseline out of bounds, and then we keep the jump ball. So that's all. I'm not sure if you heard the news about Kobe Bryant um, passed away uh, today in a helicopter crash with uh, one of his daughters. Um, can you talk a little bit about the impact he's had on? The, on the women's game, especially, you know, the, the girls' game as, as he's, you know, coached his daughters? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's such a, a, a tragic uh, event uh, today. Kobe has been remarkable to women's basketball. Um, you know, just, uh, was it two weeks ago? 
I think she goes up, he goes up and sees Haley Van Lith play. Um, it, I mean, it's really not. It, it's it's hard hard to put into words right now. Uh, it's something I I didn't find find out about until a little bit before tip, and then it was still trying to be confirmed if if that was true and if it was him. And uh, at one point, I was told it was four of his daughters, and you know now it, it was one of his daughters. That's the report that's been circulating. So just it, it's just awful. It's not you know, and I it, it, it's more so it's. I, I, I feel for his wife and his, uh, his other children. It's not necessarily what he's done for basketball, man. It's about family. It's about family at this point in time. I'm, you know, I have four four, four children myself, and uh, just for anyone to have to deal with that, it, it, I, you wouldn't wish that on your worst <clears throat> enemy. So I, I'm just we're grateful, obviously, for for what Kobe has meant to women's basketball and, and his commitment to it and and just his courage to, to put that out there, that, hey, it's okay. You know, he supports women's basketball. So it's just devastating, sad, and, uh, I mean, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough, and I really I really feel, feel for his family. Jeff, there's so much social media reaction. Do you think kids, like, on your team still relate to a guy like that, even though I mean, obviously he's put some. Oh yeah, in there, there, there's no que- no question about it. All right, we we had a, call, a couple players that were very very devastated before the game. I mean, it was it's you know we actually talked about it. You know, we we talked about Kobe, what he did is what what he's done as a player. You know, and I said I go the reason Kobe the Mamba is because of how he played. You know, everybody knew him because of how he played. And then you get to learn about him as a person. And now all of a sudden you've got a great basketball player and a great man. And I said, hey, if if, if, if you want to pay the respect, go out there and bust your tail. Because you don't get to be his stature of a basketball player by not playing hard every single night. Uh, so, yeah, all of our players, very... We're, 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 we're a little shaken. Uh, and then I was very impressed with how, how we came out and played. I appreciate everything. Before, before you shut him down, guys, you know, if you, if you can get out there as much as, much as you can. We're, it's it's 7,700 sold tickets for our national team game coming up here next Sunday. We're not, the, the city of Louisville is not going to get this opportunity very often. The last time the national team did something like this, I believe, was in 96 or 95 before the Olympics in Atlanta. You're going to get a chance to see Olympians. Sue Burr to be here. She's won four Olympic gold medals with women's basketball, going for her fifth. Guys, that's 20 years of playing at the top. You know, obviously, as we all know, the Olympics aren't held every year. And then you're going to have Angel McCautry, who's coming back here, a two-time Olympic gold medalist. Brianna Stewart is going to be here. You're, you're not going to get a chance to see the caliber of basketball than you will on Sunday. And I hope our, our, our fan base, and, and even if you don't come to, to women's basketball games a bunch, if you've got a son or a daughter who strives to play at the highest, you're not going to get a better uh, opportunity than to come in here and see what that actually is. And the great thing about it is we still have lower bowl seats available. It's not like you're going to be sitting up top. So you're going to get a great opportunity to see some of the best basketball players in the world. So I'm hoping that we can get this thing to about 10,000, get the the lower bowl sold, the mezzanine sold. I'm hoping our suite holders will, will all come out. And then, like I said, you got plenty of time to go back Get your wings, get your six pack, and and have a wonderful time watching the Super Bowl. So I'm hoping that that we can show everybody what Louisville is all about because it's an ESPN game on as we call it, the mothership. So hopefully we we can make this place look great.